Um, let's um, maybe can you explain a little bit um, when it comes to steer by wire? Um, where do you think? How does it stack up in terms of steering feel, feedback, and creating an intuitive connection to the road for the enthusiast um, compared to something like hydraulic steering? Yes, you know, old school. So tactile. I, I have this discussion and debate with every single client. So I think one of the fortunate things in my position, um, we face everyone from the new automotive customers, you know, the Detroit three uh, European uh, OEMs, Korean, Chinese, um, Japanese OEMs. So everyone ultimately has a DNA, right? You know, mm -hmm. a vehicle, you know, uh, I think I saw an advertisement with Mazda, for example, where they say, you know, move and be moved, right? You know, driving excitement, the ultimate driving machine. Everyone has their... DNA or, you know, how they feel that their vehicle should translate a connection to different people. You know, many years ago, everyone always talked about the transition to EPS and how it was such a, a muted sensation or a connection because it didn't have that same kind of, you know, fluid transfer with the valves and that different connection. Um, nevertheless, you know, EPS continued to evolve and evolve. There's many different type of applications, belt drive, pinion drive, single pinion, dual pinions, you know, dual driven pinion solutions, you know, so that the technology has continued to mature. Um, I would say, and, and I have this debate actually, even with our clients where, you know, a, a fixed percentage of people are, are extremely focused, you know, the journalists, mm -hmm. you know, automotive enthusiasts in terms of what that connection meant for so many people. And um, I completely value that. And, and as a car guy as well, I um, actually, when I was the first time I went and did the racing activity, I um, actually asked one of the instructors, you know, to give me a little bit more um you know, availability and clarity in terms of how to really handle the car at the maximum capabilities. And what was most interesting is when I was having the professional driver do a ride along, he had basically said, you know, you as engineers have designed the vehicle to do this, you know, to do that, like as we were entering the different corners. And so from an analytical and theoretical perspective, I always understood, you know, the contact patch, the yaw distribution, you know, that connection, the torque application, and is the suspension would unwind. Like my very first laps, I was putting so much effort, you know, and my hands were so tight. And he simply looked at me and said, you know, as an engineer, you guys have designed the car to do what it does, right? So loosen your grip as an example, and just let the suspension unwind, carry that inertia through the curve. And I was just getting so much better lap times because he said, you know, motorsport is not a, a function of power. It's more of finesse, right? And so Absolutely. to get to that point, as we start, you know, migrating from hydraulic to EPS, now to steer by wires, how do we get that level of finesse? You know, how do we get that connection? So really, you know, the secret is the knowledge that the people have, right? Our, our tuning experts, the steer feel experts, the communication and understanding really the entire chassis. You know, it's not exclusively about calibrations, right? A vehicle is a system, you know, a suspension is a massive system, right? And so all of those different elements of that system kind of combined into what sets that, that feel capabilities. Now where I see, you know, also being you know, someone that, you know, kind of continues to evolve as well. I love the sound of a V8. I mm -hmm. love the sound of, you know, that visceral reaction, the engagement that you have, you know, from the exhaust, et cetera. But, you know, I've also, you know, even with my own vehicle, when I'm in purely electric mode and I'm just in a driving situation, having that absolute silence, there's such a, a luxury and civility to just being in such a quiet and comfortable avenue. And the benefit, this is really where I see with the bywire actuators, is with having, you know, a more legacy type architecture, as we talked about the system, you have a physical connection. That physical connection is great in many regards, but it also restricts you in many regards. Because what we can do with electronics um, is 
exponential versus what we can do with individual mechanical variables. Mm -hmm. So at the present moment, you know, and we're, we're doing a number of, you know, engagements and customer events, you know, with a variety of our different steer boy wire products. And you can see, you know, the, the pure enthusiasts, we're really starting to chip away at, you know, that mindset, because as we continue to evolve those calibrations and those engagements, even the most seasoned of individuals are, are starting to acknowledge, wow, this is, this is really, really uh, substantially improving, right? As we continue to use our simulations and our models, I, you know, as an example, many of our calibrations for vehicles are now released exclusively for the very first initial releases are done exclusively in a drivers in the loop type environment. So we can actually release calibrations. You know, many years ago when I first started in the industry, everyone was building two, 300 vehicles, crashing them, paying, you know, multitudes of money, you know, exponentially higher costs for a prototype actuator. And then ultimately all of those vehicles were disposed as a pre-development activity. With steer by wear, just like with so many of our analytics and simulations, you know, there's not a lot of new invention. Mechanical characteristics, stiffness, contact patches, friction characteristics, you know, the, the chassis dynamics. The more and more and more we model that, the more and more we have available so that we're, we're saving everyone money. So does a steer-by-wire system help the OEM to streamline and simplify that um, aspect of vehicle development that you need less... Um, Let's say iterations and prototypes on your steering system. So it, it can. What I always say, um, the problem with steering is there's a lot of steering engineers that are designing the systems. So that that's a blessing and a curse in some regards because we do things a lot often the way that things have been done just because this is the institutional knowledge. One of the biggest benefits that I see with you know the by wire actuation is that the vehicles have so much intelligence already native to the vehicle that we add so much additional layers of redundancy in each individual actuator, but there's so much intelligence that exists in the rest of the vehicle that you can, uh, you know, incorporate that knowledge. As an example, you know, the as we talked in our last session, you know, safety is absolutely at the core of everything that we do. And oftentimes there's a lot of redundancy depending on each individual customer about how much redundancy you need to add into each individual situation for like a fail safe condition, right? As an example though, you can break by steering, right? So do you have to add such high levels of redundancies for multiple failure points, triple, you know, double, triple redundancies when you have additional capabilities that you have on your vehicle that can actually, you know, step in for that. And it's truly a fail safe because it's not in that same central failure mode point as an example. Mm -hmm. So as far as I understand, I think that the standards surrounding um, steering systems are somewhat self-imposed by the automotive industry. Um, I guess one, is that correct? And two, do you foresee that there's going to be some type of regulatory oversight from the governing bodies? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we and our customers have an absolute obligation, right, to meet all of the NHTSA requirements. We use ISO 26262, uh, you know, as we go through our quality process and our safety process, uh, and ultimately, obviously, keeping the occupants and the families absolutely safe is always at the core of everything that we do. So th there's no... Um, uh, approaches to really, you know, shortcut those uh, activities. However, I think where you see the biggest utility is the by wire actuators is an example. What kills every business is is the proliferation, right? You know, a certain vehicle or a certain pickup truck will have different engine offerings, right? You know, two, sometimes three, sometimes four type of packages, for example. And so often, you know, sticking with a steer by wire solution each one of those engine packages oftentimes drive a different 
integration into the frame because you have to work around the routing for your intermediate shaft to go to your input pinion as an example so that in and of itself will drive a different tower angle will have you know drive different foot mounts because you have a diesel engine or you have a four cylinder engine or you have a six cylinder engine or a v8 as an example right mm-hmm. so each one of those variants oftentimes then has a completely different steering system largely with a lot of the same internal mechanical components but the environment that it interfaces is completely different. As an example, in a bywire actuation, having that mechanical connection now, having to route from your input handwheel area down to that rack is completely agnostic. It, it doesn't exist anymore. So one of the um, conversations that we have with our customers, for example, we have our, our nomenclature is a handwheel actuator, right? So the, the device that basically simulates that road feedback because there's clearly no mechanical connection. It's all ultimately a simulation based on all of the different sensing and the inputs that we receive coming back in from the tire through the rest of the suspension. So done well, you can now have one hand wheel actuator that can go from an A segment vehicle all the way to a class eight truck because it's completely agnostic. Mm -hmm. And so as we continue then to scale that and then deploy that with our different customers, that's really, you have higher safety because you now have less proliferation. You have an absolutely proven set of electronics that's been proven in 1 million, 2 million, 10 million, 100 different vehicles, 